It's been almost exactly three years since I built my own off-grid DIY solar power system, and my god a lot has changed since then. So I thought this would be the perfect time to look back at my setup, see what's changed over the years, how much power I've generated and cost I've saved, and if DIYing a solar power system is worth it. Let's dive in, starting with my setup. In 2022, I bought three Trina Solar 400 watt panels, a Renogy 60 amp MPPT charge controller, eight Fogstar LifePo 4 cells, a 250 amp DALI BMS, and a three kilowatt pure sine wave inverter. All of that was something like two and a half to three grand, with the majority of that being the battery itself. I've done my best to track at least the energy used with a Samsung SmartThings Zigbee plug, and it has recorded over 2 megawatt hours of energy usage exclusively from solar. The back of the napkin maths says that that's about £700 worth of energy at the varying energy prices over the years that I've not had to spend. That does mean that the return on investment time is likely a decade, although I'll talk more about that in a moment. For now, I should also add that I've actually had to replace the inverter because I was an idiot and accidentally connected the grid to the inverter's output. Through multiple circuit breakers though, which kind of blew the inverter up. The new one was another £300. And so, like, while I was in there, I also added a battery isolator switch and a pre-charge resistor, and I put the whole thing in a enclosed and partially insulated box, where, especially for the winter, the inverter's heat output helps keep the batteries warm enough. I've spent maybe £500 on improvements over the years, which I'm well aware is the vast majority of the savings that I've made. There are plenty of changes that I would have made to the system sort of now, having experienced it for years. The biggest one is just more solar panels. Three 400 watt solar panels only offer a maximum of 1.2 kilowatts in summer for an hour or two a day. The maximum that this system can seemingly generate is around 6 kilowatt hours per day. I think like one day in the last three years it was closer to 7 kilowatt hours, but that was a one time thing. That is obviously a decent chunk of power, and I do make use of it, but it isn't enough to both run all my systems and charge the battery so that I can keep using them overnight. That means that I have to switch loads on and off, which is actually why I blew up the inverter. I made an automatic switchover box and messed the timing up by accident, and it went bang. And so yeah, that's a little annoying. I'm planning on building a bit of decking with a slanted roof attached to the back of the house, so I'm considering adding another two or three panels up there, depending on what I can fit, and another charge controller, so I can actually make use of the energy every day, and I might have some chance of using at least just my displays on solar over winter. The battery capacity is actually fine. The thing that I would change is the BMS and monitoring, so I can better track how much energy is actually in the batteries, because right now I really can only go off of the generation and usage and the battery voltage, and the battery voltage changes under load, and especially for LiPo 4 cells, that thing is remarkably flat with just sharp changes at either extremes, so it's pretty hard to know exactly. More info is definitely more better in this case, that would mean that I can make better use of the energy I'm capturing. I would also love even a small wind turbine to supplement the energy production, although that's maybe a different story. I'd also consider running a 5 core armed cable to the shed instead of the 3 core that I have, so that I can run a mains powered battery charger that I can turn on and off, so that even if I can't fill the battery throughout the day with solar, I can at least keep using all of the devices that are connected to the solar power generation. That also means that I could potentially swap to a like variable tariff, like cheap nighttime tariff, and fill the battery at night with the, the cheaper electricity, then just use that throughout the day with the solar just topping it up for me. To be fair to the system though, there have actually been a couple of power outages that the system has helped tide me over. That self-reliance is something that I value quite a lot, so having the ability to at least run the essentials, even if the grid is out, is really nice. 
that helps offset the slower than expected returns for sure. It has also just been a fun project. If I were to build this again today, the biggest change has to be the batteries. The same pack that cost me like two grand would now set you back just 500 pounds. Seriously, that's how much these LifePo 4 packs or cells have come down in price. It is mental. Stuff like the inverters are still pretty much the same price, although the solar panels have always been remarkably cheap, but somehow they've come down even more. I found 450 watt panels for £66 per panel, brand new. £66 for 450 watts for 30 years. It's an absolute steal. So is it worth building your own DIY solar power system? Well, it's pretty hard to give a definitive answer, but to be honest, I think it's even more worth it now than it was three years ago when I built mine. It's way cheaper. You can build basically the same system as me for £1,500 or so, or for a touch more, build something that's perhaps even more useful. It depends a lot on your current energy supply and how much space you've got available. If, like me, you've only got space for a couple of panels, then its usefulness is perhaps a little limited, and how I actually use the power is still a bit janky. But if you're looking to power a cabin or something that wouldn't otherwise have power, and just want enough for a light, so maybe a little media sensor, that sort of thing, then a couple of panels on the roof and a little, even a 12 volt battery instead of my 24 volt one would be great. Considering the dramatically cheaper costs involved now, this is an amazing way to be at least partially self-sufficient, save money, and do something really cool. Of course, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about building your own DIY power system? What do you think about my own setup? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. If you haven't checked out my initial setup videos, check those out on the end cards. And if you want to check out my more usual hardware, the open source latency and response time testing tools, head to osrtc.com linked in the description. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.